The last of the elementary arithmetic operations is division, and in many ways this is the most complicated, not for any particular reason other than we actually combine two very different ideas when we talk about division. So again, mathematics begins when we take some sort of concrete process and make abstraction of it, and in this particular case, uh, the process is, well, sometimes we have some sort of quantity, and we want to allocate that to a group of people equally. And there's actually two different ways we have of doing this. So for example, let's say I have a whole bunch of things and I want to distribute it among several recipients. So there's two distinct problems that are going to emerge. First, I might know the number of recipients. I might know the number of people that I'm giving this to. And so for example, say I have this collection of objects and I want to divide this among three recipients. And the question that I want to answer is, how many does each person receive? Now, because we're dividing the amount into a given number of parts, there's three parts which will be given to each of the recipients, then this particular question is known as a partitive division. The other possibility is I might know how much each recipient is going to receive. So I'm going to take this amount here and I'm going to divide it up so that each person receives this much. And then the question that I want to answer is, well, how many people can I give this much to? And because I'm dividing the amount into parts of a given size this much, this is called the quota, because I know the quota, then what I have is what's called a quotative division. So for example, let's take that partitive division. So I have this collection here, and I want to split it up among three recipients, and I do want to make sure that I give the same amount to each person. So one way we can solve this problem might be the following. So I'll set up some bags, some, some places that I can put these things that we're going to distribute. And so here I have one, two, three recipients. So I'm going to have one, two, three bags, one, two, three places that I can drop these things into. And I have a whole bunch of things here. This is my collection that I'm going to try and distribute. So I want to distribute these so that all the bags have the same amount. Now, one way to guarantee that all the bags have the same amount is to uh, put the same amount in each bag, which means that I'm going to take out sets of three of these so that I can put in one, two, three. So I'll take a set of three and distribute them. I'll put another one in each bag. So again, that's going to require one, two, three more. So this set of three is gone. And what I have left at this point, I can't distribute this last one because if I give this one out, then somebody has more than somebody else, than everybody else. So we're left with some number remaining and I can't distribute this last one evenly. So if we can summarize our steps, again, mathematics occurs when we make an abstraction of some sort of concrete process. And so what I did is I took this amount, I divided it among three recipients, and each one got this amount, and there was this left over. And so the abstract feature of this set, well, that's a 7. The abstract feature of this set, that's 2. The abstract feature of this, one, and that says 7 divided among 3 gives 2 with 1 remaining. And our notation for this process is going to remind us that when we did this, we removed sets. So again, to go back to that, here's my original, and I tried to distribute it equally among those three places. So I threw one in each, I threw another one in each, and that removed them from the original set. Well, that's a subtraction. And so the notation that I'm going to use is going to be a variation of my subtraction symbol. Now, I'll either write it this way and write 7 divided by 3 is 2 with a remainder of 1. Or the other option is I can use something that looks like the subtraction symbol, but it's a slash 7 divided by 3 is 2 with a remainder of 1. Well, I can do the same thing quotatively, and again, the quotative problem is if I know how many each person is going to get, then the question that I want to answer is how many persons receive this amount. So here, this time, I'll proceed in the same way, and I'll set down a number of empty bags and fill as many as I can with the understanding that each bag has to have three of these things. So I'll fill the bags one by one. Here's a set of three, which I'll drop into the first bag. 
Here's another set of three, which I'll drop into the next bag. And, well, now I'm left with one, and that's not enough to put into this last bag. So I can fill one, two bags, and I'll have one left over. And again, we'll make abstraction of the process. Again, this amount seven divided into collections of this amount three. I got two collections, one, two, and there's one thing left over. And as before, we did this by removing sets. We have our original amount, and we removed a set of three. We removed a set of three. And again, we'll use our symbol for that division. And so again, we have seven divided by three is two with remainder one using either that symbol or the slash. Now let's uh, take a look at how we can define division. So now when we divided seven things among three recipients, each received two and there was one left over. The other way we can look at this is we had three sets of two and one more gave us our original. And so that means that there's a relationship here. When I found 7 divided by 3 gave me 2 with remainder 1, it's the same as saying 7 is 3 twos plus 1 more. Now, that was our partitive division. My quotative division will give me something slightly different. When I divided 7 into sets of 3, I got 2 sets, and there was 1 left over. So that says that 2 sets of 3 with that one thing left over is going to give me 7. And this time we have the relationship 7 divided by 3 remainder 1. 7 is two sets of 3 with one more left over. Now because multiplication is commutative, these two are really the same relationship. The only difference is this is 3 times 2, this is 2 times 3, and we can use that to give our actual definition of division. And so suppose I have A is BQ plus R. So there we have it, BQ plus R, where R is something between 0 and less than B. And that emerges because if you think about what we did here, if I still had 3 left over, I would have distributed them. So the only reason I stop giving things out is I've run out of things to give out. So I have the remainder has to be less than b. Well, then it tells me that a divided by b is q with remainder r. And some terms here, this amount that I'm giving out, that's our dividend. This amount, which either represents the number of sets or the size of each set, is going to be our divisor, the value here, the number of sets that we have, or the number in each set, that's our quotient, and then what's left over is going to be our remainder.